Hello and welcome to Celebrity Mastermind with me, Clive Meyer. In the spotlight tonight are John Pienaar, a journalist. His specialist subject is the post-war Prime Minister Clement Attlee. Rick Witter, lead singer with Britpop band Shed 7. He'll be answering questions on The Smiths. Comedian Susie Ruffle, her specialist subject, the films of Sandra Bullock and Dakota Blue Richards, an actor known for the Golden Compass and Endeavour, her subject, the music of Lana Del Rey. Our four celebrities tonight have never yielded to convention. No, not for them, the straight and narrow. The road is less travelled upon which they traverse through vistas of free expression, gaiety and light. So what the heck are they doing here? Brought down to earth with a bump, I say, their egos won't be massaged by the famous black chair. Backache is more likely as they squirm and wriggle, promising to sack the PR who thought it might be a good idea to submit to Mastermind's harsh light. But you never know. They love it, and we love them for it too. They're here for a bit of fun and to help their favourite charity. A minute and a half on their specialist subject and two minutes on general knowledge await. So, can I ask our first celebrity contender to please make their way to the black chair? Your name? John Pienaar. Your occupation? Broadcaster and journalist. Your chosen charity? Macmillan Cancer Support. And your specialist subject? Clement Attlee. The Prime Minister who enlarged and improved social services and the public sector in post-war Britain, notably creating the National Health Service. In one and a half minutes, starting now, Attlee entered Parliament after the 1922 general election when he was elected as the MP for which constituency? Stepney. Stepney Limehouse. Yes, Attlee was appointed Deputy Leader of the Labour Party after its crushing defeat in the 1931 general election, who was appointed leader? George Lansbury. Yes, on becoming leader of the Labour Party in 1935, Attlee formed a defence committee that included Emmanuel Shinwell, A.V. Alexander and which other politician whom Attlee would appoint Secretary of State for war in 1945? Pass. In May 1940, two years before he became Deputy Prime Minister, Attlee joined the War Cabinet of the new National Government when he was appointed to which office by Winston Churchill? Lord Privy Seal. Yes, a few days after his party's victory in the 1945 general election, Atlee returned to which German city to take part in the conference of the big three Allied war leaders? Potsdam. Yes, the first nationalisation by Atlee's Labour government in 1946 was that of what financial institution? The Bank of England. Yes, who was the Viceroy of India in 1946 to whom Atlee wrote suggesting that he take on a political advisor to help him establish a constituent assembly to oversee the drafting of a constitution for India? Lord, pass. An Iron Bevan resigned from the Attlee government in 1951 after which future Labour leader, then Chancellor of the Exchequer, proposed the introduction of charges for NHS dental work and glasses? Hugh Gates gone. Yes, what's the name of the house in the village of Prestwood in Buckinghamshire to which Attlee and his wife Violet moved when they, when they left Downing Street in 1951? Cherry Cottage. It was Cherry Cottage. And John, you had just the two passes. Viceroy of India, 1946, Archibald Wavell. And uh, Jack Lawson was the uh, person that, uh, yes, Clement Attlee appointed Secretary of State for war in 1945. So, at the end of that round, John, you've got seven points. And our next contender, please. Your name? Rick Witter. Your occupation? Musician. Your chosen charity? St. Leonard's Hospice. And your specialist subject? The Smiths. The influential and distinctive alternative rock band formed in Manchester in 1982, featuring the guitarist Johnny Marr and the singer Morrissey. In one and a half minutes, let's go. Who joined the Smiths as their bass player just before the band's second gig, replacing Dale Hibbert, who had been part of the group for their debut live performance at the Ritz in Manchester? Andy Rock. Yes. What single did the band perform on their first appearance on Top of the Pops in November 1983, with Morrissey waving around a large bunch of gladioli throughout the song? This charming man. Yes, who effectively served as the Smiths' first manager and allowed the band to rehearse in a room above his shop, Crazy Face, with Ma later declaring that he was the unsung hero of the Smiths' story. Joe Moss. Yes. Which track on the Smiths' eponymous 1984 album features the line, and your prejudice won't keep you warm tonight? 
Uh, the hand that rocks the cradle. No, what difference does it make? At Glastonbury in 1984, the Smiths' encore was thwarted by a stage invasion after their set had already been shortened by the late arrival of which other act? Culture Club? No, Amazulu. Andy Rourke and the drummer Mike Joyce were each paid what percentage of the Smiths' recording royalties and performance profits, later taking highly publicised legal action against Morrissey and Ma over the matter? 10%. Yes, which playwright appeared on the cover artwork of the 1987 single Girlfriend in a Coma and the compilation album Louder Than Bombs released that same year? Sheila Delaney. Yes, Morrissey recorded backing vocals for Big Mouth Strikes Again, which were altered to a higher pitch and credited to what fictional person whose name refers to a district of Manchester. Um, Morrissey. No, it was Anne Coates. Cal Anne Coates. And Rick, you had no passes and at the end of that round, you've got five points. <laughs> and our next contender, please. Your name? Susie Ruffle. Your occupation? Comedian. Your chosen charity? Spread a smile. And your specialist subject? The films of Sandra Bullock. The Oscar-winning actress born in Arlington, Virginia in 1964. In one and a half minutes, let's go. In the 1994 film Speed, Annie, played by Bullock, is warned that she mustn't let the booby-trapped bus travel below how many miles per hour or it will explode? 50. Yes. What state does Gracie Hart represent in the Miss United States beauty pageant in Miss Congeniality? New Jersey. Yes, in While You Were Sleeping, Lucy convinces Peter's family that she is his fiance by revealing that he suffered an embarrassing injury while playing what sport? Uh, pass. In Bullock's Oscar-winning role in The Blind Side, Leanne Tui compares the troubled teenager Big Mike to what children's book character because of his gentle nature? Uh, the buffalo... Oh, hey... Oh, hey. Pass. What nickname does Grandma Annie give to the quilt that she hands to Margaret and Andrew to keep them warm at night in the proposal? The baby maker? Yes, in Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, Bullock's character, Linda Shell, contacts 472 people with what surname as she attempts to help her son Oscar come to terms with his grief after the death of his father? Black. Yes, what herb does the witch, Sally Owens, tell the investigator Gary Hallett, is put in people's tea to calm their nerves in practical magic? Uh, Rosemary? No, Belladonna. In Bullock's Oscar-nominated role in Gravity, shortly before the space mission is aborted, her character, Dr Ryan Stone, tells Commander Matt Kowalski that the thing she likes most about being in space is what? Pass. It is the silence. You had two other passes. Ferdinand the Bull. Yeah. Yeah, in the blind side. And, Peter, he suffered an embarrassing injury while playing basketball. You knew him, didn't you? They were in there somewhere. They were in there somewhere, I chair. know, I know. <laughs> Four points. <laughs> and our final contender, please. Your name? Dakota Blue Richards. Your occupation? Actor. Your chosen charity? The Trussell Trust. And your specialist subject? The music of Lana Del Rey. Yes, the music of the award-winning American singer, many of whose albums have topped the UK chart since 2012. In one and a half minutes, let's go. The cover of Lana Del Rey's self-titled debut studio album features what abbreviated version of her real name after the letters AKA? E.G. No, Lizzie Grant. Del Rey wrote and recorded the song Young and Beautiful for the soundtrack of which Baz Luhrmann film? The Great Gatsby. Yes, which Joni Mitchell song is the only cover version Del Rey included on her 2021 UK number one album, Chem Trails Over the Country Club? For free. Yes, in 2012, Del Rey performed the song Blue Jeans when she made a guest appearance on which UK television talent show? Uh... Britain's Got Talent? No, The Voice UK, which American model and DJ appears in a number of Del Rey's music videos, notably as her tattooed boyfriend in Born to Die? Bradley Soilu. 
Yeah, Switch Del Rey's song, a UK hit single when it was remixed by Cedric Gervais in 2013, features the lyrics, telephone wires above a sizzling like a snare. Honey, I'm on fire. I feel it everywhere. Nothing scares me anymore. Summertime sadness. Yes, in May 2022, Del Rey made a surprise appearance at which American Country Music Festival, joining her friend Nikki Lane on stage for two songs, Breaking Up Slowly and Look Away. Mm, Coachella? No, Stagecoach. What title track, written by Del Rey for a Tim Burton film, was nominated for the Best Original Song Motion Picture Award at the 2015 Golden Globe Awards? Big Eyes. Yes, a mostly black and white video. I've started to all finish. Accompanying which Lana Del Rey single sees her highlighted in a red dress, sitting on the H of the Hollywood sign with the singer The Weeknd? Lust for life. It is lust for life. Dakota, you had no passes. You've got six points. OK. <laughs> Well, at the end of the specialist subjects round, let's have a look at the scores. In fourth place with four points, it's Susie. In third place with five points, it's Rick. In second place with six points, it's Dakota. And in first place with seven points, it's John. So now, the general knowledge round. And if there's a tie at the end, then the number of passes is taken into account. And the person with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they're tied on passes as well, it's a tie break. So let's ask Susie to join us again, please. Susie, stalwart of the comedy circuit, described by The Guardian as a stand-up gem. It's <laughs> <laughs> pressure. You recently judged a joke competition for kids. Uh, yeah, I was, I was judging it for the Beano, and all of those gags have now gone into my show. I'm not giving them any money. Uh, <laughs> but, no, it was great. It was great to encourage children to be funny and to be playful with language and to learn about puns and wordplay. Quite often, it's not necessarily the child that's the most academic that might be the funniest, so it's quite nice to be able to celebrate different children being able to do different things, so it was lovely to be involved. What was your best kids' gag? I mean, they were quite bad, but sweet. You know, what vegetable is the best at a marathon? A runner bean. I mean... That worked for me. Listen, you're that laughing. I'm chuckling. Well, you don't, you don't show... Inside? You. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> you're the perfect audience member, someone yes, that laughs exactly. inside. Susie, do you start with four points? Ugh. You've now got two minutes. General knowledge. Let's go. How many years are there in a decade? Ten. Yes. Which character created by Michael Bond is cared for by the Brown family after they discover him at a London railway station with a note that reads, please look after this bear? Paddington Bear. Yes. The sea that's bordered to the north and west by China and to the east by the Korean peninsula shares its name with what colour? Pass. What planet has two heavily cratered moons called Phobos and Deimos? Saturn. No, Mars, which Australian former rugby union player was appointed as head coach of the England national team in 2015. Shane Ward. No, Eddie Jones. A classic mojito cocktail is made by adding lime juice, sugar, mint and soda water to which spirit? Rum. Yes, when the E20 postcode was introduced in 2011 for London's Olympic Park and neighbouring areas, it was already being used for a fictional London borough. That's the setting for what television soap? Uh, EastEnders? Yes. Which South African political figure initially jailed in 1962 was released from Victor Verster Prison near Cape Town on the 11th of February 1990? Nelson Mandela? Yes. What 1956 hit single for Elvis Presley opens with the lines, well, it's one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, now go, cat, go. Uh, Blue Suede Shoes? Yes. The British photographer Patrick Anson, noted for his portraits of the royal family, was better known by what name after the earldom he inherited in 1960? Uh... Uh, I've watched The Crown, but I can't remember it. No, sorry. I'll take that as a pass. <laughs> An audiometer is a device used to assess the functioning of which of the five senses? Hearing? Yeah. The cougar or mountain lion is more generally known by what four-letter name? Uh, a, no, pass. The name of what tall, deeply cleft hat worn by a bishop is also a word used in carpentry for a type of right-angled joint. Pass. Which Canadian singer married... I've started so I'll finish. Which Canadian singer married the American model Hayley Baldwin in 2018? Justin Bieber. It is Justin Bieber. Four passes. Susie, um, a mitre is what a bishop might wear. Right. 
Uh, Puma, Cougar or Mountain Lion? Lord Litchfield. He's the photographer, noted for his portraits of the royal family. And that C, the colour, yellow. Mm. Yes. So, Susie, you've got 12 points. OK. Next up, it's Rick. Rick, frontman for 90s band Shed 7, 15 top 40 hits, chasing rainbows, going for gold, happy days. They certainly were, yes, and we're still uh, clinging to the wreckage. Yeah, you're still together? Yes, we're still going strong. We've got a new album coming out later in the year. We're touring, um, so all, all very good, yeah. 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 Nice to keep doing it. Shed 7, not very uh, rock and roll. I mean, yeah, in the fact, word shed, it doesn't really <laughs> enamour you to. I was going to say, in fact, a woman mistook you for a shed manufacturer, or at least a band for a shed manufacturer. She did, yes. She got us a bit wrong. She, uh, she ordered a, a garden shed um, and it didn't arrive in time, so she had a little bit of a moan on Twitter, but tagged us in instead of the shed shop. <laughs> <laughs> so we replied saying, we don't deal in sheds, we just deal in rock and roll. Yeah. Um, but we have invited her to a future gig if she wants to come to oh, watch really? us play. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Well, okay. we could go and play in her shed, couldn't we? You could play in her shed. <laughs> Absolutely. You start with five points. The score to beat as it stands is 12 points. You've got two minutes on general knowledge. Let's go. In a common expression, events that are in the past and no longer considered important are referred to as water under the what? Bridge. Yes. Which of the four sections of a modern symphony orchestra includes violins, violas and cellos? Strings. Yes. What was the name of the notorious criminal who was convicted of tax evasion in 1931 and served part of his resulting jail sentence as prisoner number 85 in Alcatraz? Morrissey. No, Al Capone. From 2015 to 2017, the singer Jamie Guinness, the presenter Ori Aduba and the actor Joe McFadden were the celebrity winners of which annual television contest? Uh, uh, I'm a celebrity. No, Strictly Come Dancing. Boris Johnson married Carrie Simmons in May 2021 in a ceremony at which Roman Catholic Cathedral in London? St. Paul's. No, Westminster Cathedral. The Middle Eastern dip hummus is made by adding tahini, garlic, olive oil and lemon juice. To what main ingredient? Chickpeas. Yes, which Shakespeare heroines? Last words are, O oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheath, there rust and let me die. Hamlet. No, Juliet. What imperial unit of measurement is commonly abbreviated to the letters YD? Yard. Yes, which American actor has also directed many films, including Million Dollar Baby, J. Edgar and American Sniper? Baz Luhrmann. No, Clint Eastwood, a cricket umpire who raises both arms above the head, is signalling a score of how many runs? 100. No, six. What annual festival celebrating the resurrection of Christ falls in Western Christianity on a Sunday between the 22nd of March and the 25th of April? Easter. Yes. Which city in California, the second largest in the state, is around 15 miles from the Mexican border and the city of Tijuana? Um, San Francisco? No, San Diego. The word bellwether originally referred to a castrated male of what farm animal, specifically one that traditionally had a bell hung around its neck? Cow? No, sheep. In April 2022, Shabazz Sharif was sworn in as the new Prime Minister of which Asian country? Um, India? No, it's Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And Rick, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've got ten points. <laughs> Next up, it's Dakota. Dakota, you made your debut in the Hollywood film The Golden Compass at the age of 11. Mm. I mean, the competition for that role must have been intense. There were 10,000 girls that auditioned for Lyra. 10,000? Yeah. <laughs> I think I just got very lucky. It's a great performance. And you were there with Nicole Kidman, Daniel Craig. Everybody was so lovely and kind and took such good care of me that, um, it just ended up being fantastic and, and so much fun. Well, I mean, I have to say, Dakota, Blue Richards. Are you going to be feeling blue after the general knowledge round? 
I hope not. <laughs> I don't have much confidence. Oh, no, not at all. Let's see, because you've got six points on your specialist subject round. The score to beat, as it stands, is 12 points. You've got two minutes of general knowledge, starting now. According to a proverb that advises against forming an opinion of something based on its outward appearance, you should not judge a book by its what? Cover. Yes. What toy doll launched in the late 1950s was given the middle name Millicent and the surname Roberts? Cindy? No, Barbie. Which US president was shot and fatally wounded while watching a performance of the comedy play Our American Cousin? Abraham Lincoln. Yes, a style of sofa typically upholstered with leather and with a buttoned high back and arms shares its name with what English town between Sheffield and Derby? Uh, Chesterfield. Yes, at the 2022 Commonwealth Games, which country topped the medals table with 67 golds? Um, the US. No, Australia. What large flightless African bird is the subject of a popular myth that it buries its head in the sand when frightened? An ostrich. Yes, which Italian-born actress and model who appears in the films Blue Velvet and Death Becomes Her is the daughter of the Swedish actress Ingrid Bergman? A pass. In Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, what's the surname of Wendy and her brothers? Darling? Yes, the river island known as the Ile de la Cité and the Pont Neuf, or New Bridge, which connects it to the river bank on either side, are landmarks in which European capital city? Paris? Yes, what alliterative name is given to compounds such as carbon dioxide and methane that trap heat radiated from the Earth's surface? Uh, uh, pass. In the Gregorian calendar, there are how many days in the month of May? 31. Yes, in December 2021, which British rapper won a MOBO Album of the Year award for his chart-topping release, We're All Alone in This Together? Um, Stormzy? No, Dave, which Royal Navy ship, noted for its role in the Battle of Trafalgar, was later opened as a museum in Portsmouth, where it was stationed in a dry dock in 1922. Pass. Which television sports presenter and former tennis champion retired from presenting... I've started so I'll finish. Tennis champion retired from presenting Wimbledon in 2022 after covering the tournament for 30 years. Pass. It was Sue Barker. OK. You had um, three other passes. HMS Victory is a Royal Navy ship, and the term for gases that trap heat radiated from the Earth's surface, greenhouse gases. Oh. Isabella Rossellini is the Italian-born actress and model from Blue Velvet and Death Becomes Her. At the end of that round, Dakota, you've got 13 points. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> And finally, let's have John again. John, you've been at the forefront of reporting politics for 30 odd years. You're now on Times Radio presenting Drive. Um, give me a standout moment. I could, I could pick any, any six of, of, of 100. Yeah, I covered every moment of the fall of Margaret Thatcher, one of the great prime ministers of the last century. I will never forget being in Washington, D.C. on the, the night that Barack Obama was elected as president of the United States. I never for a moment really imagined a black man could be the president of the United States. I could, I could go on and on, but so many moments, Clive. Has the art of political reporting changed? It has changed. I mean, um, um, beyond re all recognition. Back in the days of, of analogue journalism, it was as if people like me and like you, Clive, were, were part of a process of rationing news and rationing information. And now it is like an all-you-can-eat buffet that never shuts. And, and people are served up an, an awful lot of good stuff and an awful lot of garbage. Right, well, they say a week is a long time in politics. Uh, the next two minutes going to be a long time in your life, John. You've got seven points. The score to beat to become Celebrity Mastermind is Dakota's 13 points. No chance. Two minutes on general knowledge. Let's go. On a vehicle's gear stick, which gear is represented by the letter R? Reverse. Yes, which facial features are sometimes informally called peepers? Eyes. Yes, Walter White and Jesse Pinkman are the main characters in which American television drama series that ran from 2008 to 2013? Batman. No, Breaking Bad. Postcodes beginning with the letters CV cover addresses in and around which English city in the West Midlands? Uh, Birmingham. No, Coventry. Which romantic novelist described Lord Byron, who would later become her lover, as mad, bad and dangerous to know? 
Oh, God, uh, lady, uh, lady, lady, pa pass. The species of owl with the scientific name Athene noctua, which was introduced to Britain in the late 19th century, has what common name on account of its diminutive size? Um, no, barn owl. No, little owl, which Oscar-winning actor was born Morris Micklewhite in southeast London in 1933? Um, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Pass. A football shirt sold at auction for more than £7 million in May 2022 had been worn by which Argentine player in a match against England at the 1986 World Cup? Maradona. Yes, what two-word name for the place at a theatre or cinema where tickets are sold is also used in reference to the commercial success of a production? Box office. Yes. In June 2022, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., commonly known as Bong Bong Marcos, was sworn in as president of which Asian country? The Philippines. Yes. In cookery, what type of pastry, sometimes known as cream puff pastry, is used to make profiteroles and eclairs? Um, um, shoe. Yes. From 2018 to 2022, which British singer had UK top ten singles entitled Paradise, Hold My Girl and Green Green Grass? Uh, uh, Tom Jones. No, George Ezra. What 1938 satirical novel by Evelyn Waugh about a war in the fictional African country of Ishmaelia is subtitled a novel about journalists? Scoop. It was Scoop. John, two passes. Michael Caine was Michael born Caine. Morris Micklewhite. And you said Lady, 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 Lady Caroline Lamb. Lamb. Yes, mad, bad and dangerous to know. And at the end of that round, John, you've done it by a hair's breadth. 14 points. Sorry, Dickens. <laughs> so, let's have a look at the final scores. In fourth place, with 10 points, it's Rick Witter. In third place, with 12 points, Susie Ruffle. In second place, with 13 points, Dakota Blue Richards. And in first place, with 14 points, John Pienaar, which means he takes home the trophy and is tonight's Celebrity Mastermind winner. John, many congratulations. Thank um, you, Brian. Was that hairy? Yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> It's only me. But you're incredibly <laughs> intimidating. I don't know if you realize <laughs> Well, many Thank congratulations, you. John. Thank you very well much. Well done. Indeed. Well done. Well, you don't have to be a celebrity to take part in the regular Mastermind programme. If you'd like to appear in the next series on BBC Two, you can apply online at bbc.co.uk slash mastermind. And you can follow us at Mastermind Quiz. Join us again next time for more Masterminds. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I actually didn't think I was going to win. I mean, it doesn't matter what you know, you've got to be asked the right questions. And I, I got lucky. Hey.